social media is a gift because we can reach all kinds of different people um, uh, on social media. I've made real friendships um, that have, you know, have sort of good, stood me in really good stead and, and done loads of really great networking on social media. But at the same time, I've also had weekends where it's, I've had a pile on uh, because I've tweeted something out that somebody doesn't agree with. And it's, it's been a, a horrible experience of like lots of people I don't know uh, saying horrible things to me. So it's, um, it, I think you just have to be aware of what you're doing on social media and try and um, and try and imagine that you're saying these things out loud and to people, to real people, um, saying mean things, you know, making a mean little joke can sometimes be, you know, it, it, those kind of things could be fun when you're a bit, when you've had, especially when you've had a couple of drinks, but, um, but it's, it's not a good idea. It's, it's not a good thing to do because this is, it's, it's not something you've said that somebody might have misheard. It's something that's printed on the internet and somebody could take the wrong way. So you just have to be careful with it. But mainly I, I think it's a bit of a joy. Cool. So how do you know if, um, how do you fact check? Have you got a favourite site? Or... Ah, <laughs> how do you fact check? The, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think if I'm being completely honest, I do not fact check as much as I should. Uh, in fact, just this morning, in fact, there was a, a strange incident, social media incident where um, uh, a, dis a film distributor, because I work in film, um, a film distributor made a joke on the internet about Bond, and uh, it was just his personal account. It wasn't the actual account, but he did tag in the the place he works for, and a few of us got really excited. We're like, "Oh my goodness, this is this this you know this is what's going to happen with Bond. This is really exciting." We were having this group chat about it. It, it got out. And I sent him a message. I sent the other person who works in the com company a message. And I was like, I'm so pleased for you. You know, like Bond is really exciting move for you. And, and he's suddenly like, oh my goodness, no, it's a joke. I had no idea anybody would take it seriously. But we all had, like a bunch of us had, and we all talked about it. And, you know, um, I didn't fa fact check that. We hadn't, none of us had fact checked it. We thought that he was probably being socially responsible, but he didn't think anybody would take it seriously. And it's, so it's it's a very good illustration. Like I said, it's only happened in the last couple of hours, but it's a really good illustration of how something can go viral really, really quickly. And um, and so, you know, there was no harm done really, because it was just this kind of silly joke, but, you know, that could be something that, um, you know, I, I then, you know, went into a meeting and told, you know, some really big industry bosses about that I've just seen that this is going to happen. My, you know, fingers on the pulse of social media and I've seen the announce, the pre-announcement, you know, it, it could have gone down a really wrong road, but uh, so it was quite lucky that, that it didn't. So yeah, fact checking is really important, but it is really difficult to fact check. I think it's, that there's the, uh, I'll just go and Google it kind of like phrase, but sometimes it's really difficult to find out facts, especially when, Things are, um, you know, it's all like I say, off the cuff. It's things are moving really quickly. Um, news moves so incredibly quickly. I mean, the, um, you know, we had the Dominic Cummings testimony yesterday, and so anybody, you know, could listen to that, and that's great. But if you've got one person was, if if you had one journalist in the room tweeting it or sort of reporting it somehow on them on their website, you know, lots of things could have been taken the wrong way or you know misquoted. So because we could we could see that we, we could fact check it in real time, but um, I think it's a it's a huge, huge challenge to fact check everything that is going on social media. But it's important to do because you might get somebody in trouble or yourself in trouble. Well, that's a brilliant example. Uh, OK, moving away from work a bit. What differences have you found when you're using social media with like older people, maybe your parents, compared to younger people, like Ellen and Mally or Reese or something like that? Do, do they use it differently? Um, me personally or them? Do I, do with I them just, in your, with in your them, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting actually, like looking at social media use with older people versus younger people and the kind of the bit in between. Um, because we're all being a lot, we're all kind of a lot more social media savvy as we get younger. And so it, it's becoming a second nature to kind of make, I mean, like memes and jokes that kind of, I mean, a meme can, can get 
can go all all the way around the houses so nobody really understands what it means by by you know within a few hours you know with with younger people you've got like something that you understood the joke and then you don't and then it's really hard for older people to understand the joke because they haven't been looking on social media for the whole time so i think that's it's really interesting because older people they are they are in that realm of kind of like they don't look at it as often um younger people it tends to be they're they're more they look at their checking more often often because they've got more time on their hands maybe or they they see it part, as part of their work anyway so it's part of their their day-to-day is that they're checking so um yeah so so sort of meme culture and like you know, social culture on that way does become um quick you know more quickly shared whereas older people because they're not sharing things as, as often it, it just tends to be the sort of the jokes are, are older basically I mean, you used to kind of see it on facebook like they're, they're like you know my dad will send me something that he's seen on facebook he thinks it is hilarious and it was like yeah kind of sort of funny about six months ago when i first saw it it's, it's just a sort of different kind of experience really and um and so i'm kind of like i'm more careful with my parents because they they tend to take things more seriously than than younger people in a way <clears throat> but at the same time um again the sort of the younger the younger you know you go the more you've got to be really careful because they don't understand that it's some of it's a joke and um, in the same way that older, older people don't so they sort of there's a sort of tipping point I suppose when they're they're teenagers and they're a bit more used to culture and they're a bit used to sort of adult jokes I suppose but yeah it's um you do have to be careful and you know I, I sort of tend to share actually with both groups like you know silly cat videos and you know like really gentle humor with with both you know both ends of the spectrum but then I've got friends who are kind of like sort of teenagers and a little bit older and, you know we share quite filthy jokes in, in some some cases you know and it's just and we totally get it because it's so kind of far deep within meme culture it's kind of like it, it's not actually filthy anymore we you know it's like quite wholesome in a way um so yeah so it tends to be with the with older people and younger people it tends to be kind of like more basic version of social media culture, if that makes sense. Yeah. Great, good answer. Okay, and last thing, um, we're looking at ways to use social media for civic engagements and social good. Have you got any good examples that have you seen recently? Um, well, I mean, civic behaviour and social good, um, it can become quite knotty because you've got a sort of official council accounts and, um, you know, uh, sort of, again, it's more of a work-based sort of public, public facing accounts um, and social media accounts, which uh, sort of just give you information, which is really useful. I certainly rely on it quite a lot for it. And like things like Transport for Wales, you know, they, they you know, we use Transport for Wales, you sort of, you check that rather than, you know, if there's a problem on the line, you're like, oh, is there, a, you know, okay, I can see Transport of Wales have give, issued something, a warning about something, so it's all right. Um, so there's kind of that, that kind of like that idea of public good, but then there's a kind of another side to it, which is kind of like um, activism and social cohesion, which is a different thing, I think. That tends to be more grassroots. It tends to be less, you know, much less official. Um, but there's, there's things like sort of kind of civic society account, which sounds like it's going to be quite official, but it's actually um, more of an activism protest account. So they, uh, they go through um, the kind of, um, they go through the planning applications of things and they're like, oh, have you noticed that this is what kind of council are going to try and do? They're going to try and knock down this, this beloved building and, and build flats or, you know, things like that. And then it becomes more of a, a viral social media activism account. Whereas, um, like I said, it's actually doing a bit of public good in that way because it's making the public aware of things that are going on in a way that's that's a bit more easy to digest than, than just kind of council giving a list of planning applications on their social media. So it's a different thing. Um, but I think it's incredibly useful. I mean, the um, in, in Grangetown where I live, uh, there's the hideout, which is the new, so in, in the Grangetown Park, there's a little cafe. And again, I, I, I knew they were building it for a little while. It was a, like a project that was kind of been going on for a while. But now because they post on social media a lot, I'm like, I'm really aware of what's going on. And like more, much more so than I, than I would be if I, um, if you know, they weren't posting at all. Because it's one of those 
places I was like, oh yeah, I kind of forget it's there. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to go down today because that, that sandwich looks tasty. Or, oh look, that, that group is meeting down there. You know, oh, that looks like it's going to be fun. There's some poetry reading this weekend, that kind of. So it's, um, yeah, I think social media can really create um, some really wonderful social, like sort of community cohesion that way. It can really bring people together and make people aware of things. But um, yeah, it, again, it's, it's difficult to know sometimes which um, which you're getting, whether you're getting like somebody who's kind of like, again, pertaining to be like, we're an official account versus this is a protest account. So again, it's just like all social media, you just gotta be a little bit careful about what's going on with it. 